All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted from my studios here at the Junction in Old Hilliard. What what an honor today, honestly, what an honor. Uh, Corby, thank you for the introduction on audio as always. Uh, for those of you on video, executive editor of Guidepost Magazine, former executive editor of Guidepost Magazine, what an honor for me. Uh, why don't why don't you introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Uh, hi, I'm Rick Hamlin. Um, I'm here in New York City where it's cold today, but otherwise. That's right. That's right. Where are you? Where are you located? Way, way uptown near the George Washington Bridge, 183rd Street. So I looked down on the, the, the Hudson River um, and I just went for a little run this morning. So I'm my cheek should be nice and pink. There you go. <laughs> that, that is awesome. So you're in New York, right? Yeah, Manhattan. Manhattan. Okay. So uh, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and it's, I think, 22 degrees. So we're, we're living through that. Uh, we're living through it. We're, we're getting through it, right? <laughs> it's, it makes me think of the song, Why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave Ohio? Hey. Why? There you go. Were you in Ohio at some point? Oh, I've been there. Yeah, okay. it's beautiful. I love it. It's it's what it is. Uh, it's what it is. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am so honored. Literally, uh, our good friend of ours, a, con uh, a joint friend of ours connected us. And I, I literally, I've been so looking forward to this. Uh, you have a brand new book. And uh, before we get to the brand new book, you have other books. You have other things you've done. Why don't you just tell your oh, story oh, yeah. and we'll get I, into you know, the book. My my feeling is is if like you know you God gives you a book you you write it and, and then what happens to it afterwards I've got books that you know are in the file cabinets and I have books that got released but uh, uh, ten prayers you can't live without uh, one of the first books I did was finding God on the A train because I live near right. the the subway train the A train um, I can't you know I don't. Uh, oh, uh, Pray For Me, that was probably my m most recent book. Um, and now, uh, Even Silence is Praise. So let's start with A-Train, because I'm very, I'm very curious about that. Um, let's just talk about that one, because, you know, I don't want to ever dismiss work. And, and at the end of the day, it's our, it's our palette. It's what we've done. It's our resume. Let's talk about a the A-Train book. You know, that's so interesting because it's really connects with this latest book. I mean, that book, uh, gosh, 25 years ago, I think it was. But uh, my subway commute was the A train. And I discovered, you know, my kids were young, that that was my prayer time. I use the place that I that I'm traveling my my commute. And people say, well, how do you do that? You know, how do you pray in, in a train? But when you choose a place to be your prayer place, that it works. It's sort of the signals, the the auditory signals, the, the train rumbling. Right. Oh, okay. Okay, God, I'm here. Right. Well, I used to take, so when I lived in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, back in the 216, uh, I used to live in Bedford and I took the, the bus every day downtown and we could read the paper. You could listen to back in those days, it was a Walkman, <laughs> it was an MP3. But, okay, but yeah. either way, you could you could do something with your half hour. Um, is that what you found on the A train? Was you decided to pray? Yeah, um, usually you know I'd read a psalm or a couple of psalms uh, until I got to 125th Street, and 125th Street close out and 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 be silent. And one of the things you have to always do is be aware. Uh oh, there's you know. Uh, an older person, what well, could be me now, but, you know, get up, give the seat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a pregnant woman, get up, give the seat. And you kind of get signals for that. But otherwise, you know, I could close my eyes. I usually did get a seat. I usually still do get a seat. The, um, but yeah, you, you, you know, I, you check in and check out right. at the same right. time. Well, you know, utilizing time. I mean, we only, we all are given the same amount of time every day. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're the richest man in the world, the poorest man in the world, you're given the same amount of time every day. And what we do with that time, I think, is incredibly important, whether it's uh, running on a treadmill, whether it's, you know, praying, whether it's devotions, whether it's uh, business, QuickBooks, you know, whatever it might be. We're all given the same amount of time every day. And what do we do with that time, I think, is, is incredibly important. So I'm very interested to read that book as well. I really am. Do you remember that wonderful line from John Wooden, Coach Wooden, uh, make each day your masterpiece? Mm, right. 
right? I, I, you know, I, I think Casting Crowns, the Christian band Christian uh, Casting Crowns has a line that says, I want to sign my name to the end of this day, knowing that my heart was true, right? Um, I think that's a challenge for all of us. Can I sign my name? Do, do you, you know, we, we sign our names to a lot of things. Do I want to sign my name to the end of this day, knowing that my heart was true, that I, that I did this day um, in God's honor? I think is really what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I honored the time. Right. Yeah, right. that's a lovely it's phrase. It's a great I phrase. Love I, I love it. I, I would love to get them on someday. No plug intended. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about even the silence is praise. Even silence is praise. I love, I haven't read the book. I haven't had the opportunity to read the book yet. Um, just had the opportunity to interview, which is a huge honor. Um, even silence is praise. Wow. In a world that we live in today, there's so much noise. There's so much noise. I'm a big TikTok. I'm a big Twitter guy. I waste a ton of time on TikTok. Um, I'm not a big Instagram, Facebook. But anyway, we all have our thing, you know, social media. And I haven't even read your book yet, so I don't know what it's about. But I don't find silence <laughs> in my day. Um, <laughs> I find silence maybe for the five minutes I drive home every day. For some people, that commutes a half hour or the A train. Um Let's talk about even silence's praise. What is this book about? Yeah, I, my the uh, thought comes back to my memory of, of childhood and how my mother would say, "Listen to me. You can't listen to me. You got to get quiet." And and that is sort of my metaphor for what I need to do with God. I I have to get quiet. I, it's funny. I was just digging in my pocket for the old cell phone. I mean, these things, they're a wonder, a marvel, you right. know, you need right. them. But then there comes a time where you also need to ignore mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And so even silence is praise is, is how can I give myself that necessary time of silence? And, and how do I do it? Right. Um, uh, so that the rest of my day has the meaning, just that, that script that, that you want to sign yourself right. to. But, but it means not just the noise outside, but the noise inside the head, too. Right. You have five bullet points on your website, and I want to walk through those quickly. Even five minutes of quiet a day can change the way we live. What do you mean by that? But it, if you dedicate some time, and for me, I, I think it's also not just time, but place. Go back to the same place every day, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. You'll see how you need it. Mm. But when it's, it's sort of like, you know, when you sit in front of the computer, oh, it's work time, I gotta do work. When you sit in that chair, when you, you know, sit on that sofa, I, in fact, I'm sitting on my, in my prayer place. When you sit on that A train, it sort of, it signals, oh yeah, this is my time. Let, let's check in. Mm. It's incredible because honestly, um, as, as someone, so every white, every day, my wife and I do the same routine. I get up, I do my computer time. I do my stuff before I leave the house. Um, I watch the morning, I put the morning news on. I listen to the weather, the, the whatever happened in my day. My wife goes to, uh, and shout out to my wife because she goes to prayer time. Um, she pulls out her Bible. She does, she reads through her Bible every year. Um, and so she takes time. She dedicates time to read the scriptures of that day. And to your point, what a difference I think that probably makes for the two of us. Uh, and what a contrast that is. I spend my day in the world and she spends her time with God. Um, what a powerful example she has been not only for me, but for my children as well. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh God, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, the other thing about it is, is, you know, out there, a big thing out there is, is, is meditation and meditation is a wonderful thing. But I think if, when you're a person of faith, God's going to come into mm. that. You, you can't help. And so one of the things people often talk about is like, oh my gosh, the distractions you know, when, when I get silent, I get so distracted and you know what? That's part of the prayer process. Mm. Those distractions mm -hmm. are, are your chance to address right. that. Um, they often, uh, there's that, that phrase, catch and release. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in, a, 
in a God-centered prayer practice, you're not just releasing it into the air. Right. You're, you're releasing it to him. To God. Right. I can't tell you, you know, I've been doing this for years, but how often when I'm sitting there, I'm focusing on God. And what am I thinking about? Uh oh, the checkbook. Uh, gosh, do we have enough to, to pay that? Uh, yeah, I think we do. Wait, but did that, uh, that payment come right. in yet? Right. <laughs> you know what? If I'm doing that process in, if it's happening in a, in the presence of God, it's so much more powerful. Right. Right. Oh, I agree. I, as someone who's starting their own business, I mean, that's, that's my thoughts. Honestly, I don't sleep well because I, I worry about those very things. I get up in the morning. I think about those very things. I check spreadsheets when I wake up in the morning. I quick, quick, quick books when I wake up in the morning. I'm not. And again, so there's my wife who's sitting at the kitchen table and she's dedicating her day to God and she's dedicating our kids to God and me to God. She's devoting her time to God. And I'm over here worrying about QuickBooks uh, you know, and I'll, 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 I'll take the bullet and, and fall flat on my face for the fact that that's how I spend my morning. And she spends it that way. That's what a difference I think that makes in our lives. Cause I, I watch her life and I'm jealous of how she lives her life because she starts her day the right way in, in calm, in peace, in silence, in front of the one who's dedicating again, as we said, she can sign her day. She can sign her name to the end of that day, uh, knowing that her heart was true because she started it with him and she lived it with him throughout the day. Well, and your success, no doubt also is partly because of her prayers. Oh, no doubt. Cause I'm sure you're right there at the top of her list. Yes. She, she is. She's amazing. Um, I'd love for you to meet her someday. Um, all right. Bullet point two, acknowledging the mystery of God draws us to know God more. What do you mean? You know, it's, it's, it's so, oh, God, are, are you here? Are, are you there? You know, where, where are you? We can get so, but, but if you open your mind up and my friend, if it's only five minutes, it's it's still five precious minutes because that connection will be there for the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. you, you've established it. You've you've put the priorities. You know, putting those priorities right. right? It's a uh, so so the the mystery. I'm I'm you know. It's not like, you know, one of those TV series and it's going to get solved at the end. Great. And then you can go on. It's better than that because it's it's episode after episode after episode. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how God works in my life. Um, and it, maybe we don't find out the whole mystery. I don't think until the next right. life. Yeah, you're right. I think it's that tapestry when we finally see, you know, right now we just see threads and we see um we, we just see the, the sewing on the back, but when we turn that thing around, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it, it, one day I think we'll go, ah, there's that aha moment when we realize that's what you were doing. That's what you were doing. Yeah, connecting to the golden thread. I mean, just, oh, weaving yourself into it. Yeah. Yeah. God. So good. All right. Uh, bullet point three, God uses our imaginations to speak to us. What do you mean? Well, I think there I'm talking also about the, you know those things that we think of are, are distractions. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is also a, a God power. One of the things I, I uh, use in my prayer time is is, is images. I'm, I'm closing my eyes as I do it because I can't. You know, you 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 see an image or or you know for just sometimes it's just an emptiness. But sometimes what will come to me is is almost like a little little video mm -hmm. in my head, the, the trees, the wind, the, you know, God, the creator is in the creation. Right. Uh, um, and, and so uh, the imagination is one of God's gifts to us and to be able to use that just in a powerful restful right. way. Right. You know, what have you found? Because I'm a, I'm a, a apparently uh, we did the uh, pentagram or whatever it's called. Uh, the, you know, I'm an I, Enneagram Enneagram. or I don't know, something Graham. I'm a number two. Um, I know I'm an expressor. I'm an empath. I'm all those things, um, you know, because there's all those different tests out there. Um, so that's for me. I'm, I'm a dreamer by nature. 
Um, I live with uh, someone that is very um, understanding of, you know, and thank God because God brought us together. Is <laughs> she's grounded? She's you know very black and white, and I'm I'm all over the place, as you can tell probably by this very interview. Um, as a friend of a friend of mine said, um, she's the buoy, and I'm the sail. Without her, the buoy would just be in place, and and because of the sail, I tend to pull her a little direction, but. Um, you know, what, what would your, what would your recommendation be as someone who's written this book? Um, for some, you know, when you're someone like the buoy that's all over the place, you tend to be a dreamer, but at the same time, we need those buoys in our life. We need those, we need those people that have structure to keep us kind of grounded. Wouldn't you agree? And, um, as we dream, What's your best recommendation for those of us that are dreamers that tend to run all gas and no brakes, <laughs> so to speak? What, what's your recommendation for them? Uh, it's so funny. I'm a two, two, oh, there so you go. two, two, uh, uh, perfect interview. You know, <laughs> my feeling is that, you know, you know, giving myself the structure of the daily silence, mm -hmm. you know, that's also energizing myself to follow those dreams. I don't think the dreams are put there for for no reason right. i think you know um and and you know you you it's it's don't don't hide it because it's going to get bigger yeah. uh in fact you know in terms of distractions if you ignore a distraction it's only going to get bigger but you pay, pay attention to it so you pay attention to that dream but you've also given yourself tools that will help you prioritize and energize uh and maybe god willing get a good night's sleep <laughs> so right. that you're you're up you yeah. know um because i it's something i also like doing at the end of the day sit up in bed and actually sitting up helps rather you know there are prayers that you make when you're lying there in bed but which is usually help me sleep help me sleep but right. uh but you know sitting up and just going through and letting letting stuff go so that you can mm -hmm. have the energy for the dream, dream pursuing you're going to do the next day, my friend. Yeah. And I don't remember who it was. I wish I could give someone credit, but I do remember someone talking about coming home at the end of the night of a work day. And um, there was a tree outside and they would touch the tree. I don't know if you've ever heard that story. They would, they would touch the tree and they would leave the day on the tree before they went inside. Almost like you're saying, before I go to bed, you know, leaving, leaving my dreams, my, all that, let's leave it by the bedside. Let me just get a good night's sleep because honestly, that's when we're our best selves is when we get that good quality night's sleep. Uh, for those of us that are dreamers, because I think sometimes we wake up and know that. I just told my wife the other day, I need to leave a notepad by the side of the bed to write down the things I think of at two in the morning when I wake up. Um, Boy, quiet is so, it's such a great book because silence is such a, boy, it's hard to find silence in today's world. It really is. And I, and I think that's why we have to make it a choice. Yeah. Um, it, it can't be just, oh, well, God will give us silence. No, God gives us the, the thinking mind and those places. Once again, I'm still going back to not just time, but a place. Mm -hmm. Um because even if it's a noisy place like a subway train, mm -hmm. you know, because it's your chosen place for silence, you can find that inner silence. Wow. Because silence, honestly, I, I'm i just thinking through my day. I don't know, short of me, maybe my commute to work when I turn off the radio, if, if I turn yeah. off the radio, I don't have silence anywhere in my day. <laughs> I don't. I just, whether it's actual um hearing silence or you know noise or my own mind i i just wonder you know that for me i don't know if i ever have silence i think i'm constantly in motion and that's the world that we live in but you know this is a, a, a you know a fear sometimes people have is that that um the the noise of their mind mm -hmm. when they're silently praying right Oh my gosh, I'm not very good at this because that noise of my mind. In fact, that's part of the gift. Mm -hmm. It lets you hear your mind. Mm -hmm. And really importantly, even if it's just five minutes, don't get up. Don't scroll that note down. Don't get up to answer that phone. Right, right, right. You know, 
stay there because you know, that message will be there, the phone, you can recall that person, the email will be there, but this is just your moment so that when you respond to it, you'll, you'll be focused. Mm. The, um, so silence is really a choice I, uh, because God only knows the world is not giving us silence. Right. right. We have to, to claim mm. it. If that, claim it, that sounds no, like such I, a oh grand No, gosh, word. I think that's a great statement. I do. I really do. It's a fantastic statement. Um, all right, I have two more, and then, but I, I want to mention that I actually dumped my Apple Watch, and this isn't anything anti-Apple. I, I I had an Apple Watch, and I already have an Apple phone, you know, and they're connected, and and they're, you know, honestly, I found that one day I forgot my Apple Watch, and there was so much freedom. Um, and this isn't anything. If you have an Apple Watch and you use it for sports, or you're connecting, you know, for your tracking of whatever it is that it does, awesome. I, I'm not here to argue with you about your Apple phone, but uh, or your watch. Um, I found that it was just one more opportunity for me to not be silent. It was an opportunity for me to be distracted. If I was in a meeting, it's vibrating constantly because it's attached to my phone, which is attached to the notification, which is attached to all the different social medias. Um, I just found that, you know what? I don't need it. I just don't need it. And, and yeah. so now I can leave my, and I'm not bragging by any means. I hope, and I think people know my heart. Um, but sometimes I actually forget my phone places. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's right. You know, I'm checking my pockets and my coat and I'm like, oh, I forgot my phone because I don't have my watch attached to it, which was attached to, which was attached to, which was attached to, you know, and I think it's just, um, anyway, uh, that's just me. But, uh, yeah, I, that's what I found in my personal life. Okay, two more bullets. Centering prayer can free us to let go of anxiety and anger. What do you mean? Uh, well, you know, because so many of those things that you're talking about fuel our anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, uh oh, I've got to answer that. I've got to, you know. And, uh, right. you know, okay, email, text, they're a blessing. But they don't, unless you've really worked hard, they don't prioritize in any mm -hmm. way. You know, the the buzz is another message, another message, another message, or you know the the vibrating of the phone, the buzz in the Apple Watch. They're, it's just bad, bad, bad. It's it's not prioritizing in any right. way the the way life prioritizes. Right. So setting you know you know setting times where your where your phone will not vibrate, yeah. Yeah. you know where your watch is not going to call you uh, because I. Um, you know, I, I remember you know, the, the thought is, is that, you know, we can multitask. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, and so, you know, you've, I'm sure you've been in those meetings where somebody's phone vibrates, they pick it up and look at it and pretend they're paying attention to the rest of the right. meeting. You know, at that point they have left the right. room. Right. So give yourself these times to, to leave the room because anxiety, gosh, goodness knows, uh, mm -hmm. anxiety. It's interesting. I, you know, I love the, the Jesus, you know, the, the whole parable of, of the, the birds in the air, you know, uh, right. you know, okay. You look up at the birds of the air. They're doing a lot. They're flapping their wings. They're resting They're You know, they're, they're doing work. So in some ways, anxiety, there's a, a element there that helps fuel us, mm -hmm. but to keep it prioritized, because the other thing the birds in the air do is they trust. Right. They don't worry, right? They don't worry about, yeah. You know, they're not flapping their right. wings the whole time. Right. They're these huge, I mean, I love looking, talk about prayer, that's a way to pray. Mm -hmm. Just look at some birds. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that time they're, they're just like, it's, it's like rising on the spirit. Yeah. So, so it's managing our anxieties and, and, and not, not getting caught up with them. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm not Mr. Therapist, right. but, but this is part of the work that I need to do for myself. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I often, whenever I hear that, uh, you know, they don't worry about their next meal. They don't worry about these things. They're just birds and they, and they live, you know, and wow, how far have we have gotten from that? Um, you know, whether it's, COVID, whether it's uh, whatever, finances, our job, our, our marriage, there's a million things that we just get so 
consumed by and i'm not saying that those aren't important they're all very important but the birds of the air don't worry about it <laughs> i mean they're not because they don't have apple watches and apple phones and they're not watching the news and they're not all these things and we that's a whole nother rant for another day but at the end of the day they don't worry about it they just they're birds you know and uh wow, yeah. what, a, what a lesson we can learn and it's right outside our window you know <laughs> it's right outside our window it's amazing um okay last bullet God speaks to us through our bodies as well as our minds and our hearts. And I think we've touched on this quite a bit, but uh, what do you mean by God speaks to us through our bodies as well as our minds and our hearts? Well, you know, like when you're sitting there in, in silence, you know, uh, something, ah, oh, that ache in the back, you know, will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, sometimes it is just an ache in the back, but it also might be an unresolved, conflict that you need to address mm -hmm. um or connected to that so so I, I i do all i can to listen and you know we're so good at worshiping the, you know i love singing doing stuff like that but but also get your body into it too you right. know the um uh so it's i think listening to our bodies you know listen to the signal Hey man, it's time to go to sleep. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, this work can wait. Mm -hmm. It will be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, hey man, you know the the body telling us, I need to listen to my wife. Right. You know, I, I need to connect. You know, in our marriage, we we started way early in our marriage that we needed to have the half hour rule. It wasn't because we didn't connect on the the oh oh yeah, did you pay the check? Did you you know did you make dinner? All that that sort of but also just to be a little silent mm. so that you could hear some of the other stuff, mm -hmm. how you feel, mm -hmm. you know, what was that conversation with your mother like? Right. Uh, right. So when you say half hour, so, rule, so what, what does that look I, like? I, I would say, what's when that? When you say half hour, rule, what does that, what does that look like? What do you mean half hour? Rule? Well, it, for us, and, and we fail at this all the time, but, but it was at least half an hour a day, where we're with each other, we're not watching the TV, we're not reading the paper, it's usually over a meal, mm -hmm. but we're just present with each mm -hmm. other. You know, because otherwise you sort of drift apart. Right. Right. And, and we don't manage it every day, but several days a week, you know, and, and, and like I said, it's usually over a meal. You know, you're doing stuff together, you're going someplace, but after you sit for a while, it's not just the essentials, the, the urgencies that come up, some of the deeper stuff. It gives you time to address those mm -hmm. and connect. And, and I think it's the same with the divine. Mm -hmm. well, when you're just sitting there, some other stuff will come up. Wow. So, again, you get 24 hours in a day. You figure you eight of that sleeping. I'm not good at math. It wasn't 16 left in the day. Uh, uh, eight is in our work. So there's eight left, um, half hour with our spouse or significant other or ourself, if we don't have a significant other and a half hour with God in silence. What does that still leave us? I, I, I didn't do quick math. I apologize. I don't have my notepad in front of me. Well, that's, I, I believe, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think that may still leave us seven hours, seven hours to watch a ball game, to watch our kids, to, you know, it really is that simple. Uh, um, and again, I'm not preaching. I, I, I'm terrible at this, but think about that for a minute. Like literally write down the time in your day. Okay, because for some of I get seven hours, I'll get eight. So that gives me an even another hour. So there's my hour with half hour with God, half hour with my spouse. That gives me the rest of the day uh, to work, and to do all the other stuff that I want to do. I mean, think about it. Like, I think, I think we get so, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so, are you, you know? Um, but I think if we take time to just pause and maybe write down what our, our day looks like, because we all get the same amount. That's the beauty of this. It's not like somebody's short sighted and somebody gets more, somebody gets less. We all get 24 hours every single day. We get the same paycheck <laughs> of time. How do we spend it? Yeah. And, and I see, I think, you know, that, that spouse time or you know, that time with your partner, that, that time with God, both of those 
are going to help you prioritize mm -hmm. the other stuff. Right. Oh, you know, that work project, I can leave that for a little bit later. Um, that dream is good, but there's another dream that's bigger that I need to address. Mm -hmm. Now, it, we really can, it, it, it brings some, uh, you know, when you're talking about the, the tapestry, the, the threads are all working together. Yeah instead of sort of fray. Right. Okay. I know our time's limited. Um, what are the best ways that this audience can support you? The book, obviously. So where do we find the book? Uh, the book, uh, the pub date is February, February 8th. 8th. Um, okay. But, you know, of course, it's bookstores, Amazon, any of those, those places you get books. Uh, you can also go to um, uh, evensilenceispraise.com. Really? Okay. Uh, and there... Um, I don't know when they'll put them up, but there, there are some you know, some videos I made, sort of a 30-day a uh, prayer journey, sort of little short little videos, a, a minute, minute and a half, just to kind of help you work in on your prayer life um, because we're always working right. at it. Even silenceisprayer.com. And even silence is praise. I'm sorry. Even silence is praise.com. Yeah. Okay. Even silence is praise.com. Um, and then February 4th. February 8th. February 8th. February 8th. Gosh, I can't. Hold on. All right. Even silencespraise.com is the book site, right? Yeah, that's the book site, and that's me. And that's you. And February 8th is the book launch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, your time has been wonderful. Uh, what Thanks, Last thing to say before you leave. What's your best advice for someone? Someone's listening to this, and they say, I have no time for silence. What's your best advice? to find some silence in your life. Oh, in the most forgiving, generous possible way, I would say, I bet you can make some time. Mm, there you go. There you go. All right. Is there any socials that uh, people can find you? Uh, yeah, rickhamlin.com. And I'm, you know, I'm on uh, even silence is praise on social media. Um, you know, I post there and, Rick Hamlin praise. I'm on Facebook there. And so, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm out Good. there. Good. Well, don't let it take away from the silence of your day, but please go find my friend Rick and, uh, and everything we've talked about today, support him with, uh, purchasing the book, reading the book. I'm going to do that myself, uh, because honestly, I need to find some silence in my day. As I've said, my, my bride models this for me and I need to do a better job. Uh, and maybe, maybe your book will help. So I'm thankful for you. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you for taking time out of your day because I'm sure this ate into your hours of the day. And I'm, I'm very thankful for you. I really am. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. We will talk soon. Even silence is praise.com. And February That's 8th, we will, uh, we will look forward to the launch. Thank you so much, Rick. Take care.